Xi Yuan Xie Hui, Taiwan. So you know, people kind of associate it with something else. Xi Han Er. Yes, Xi yeah, Han Er. So um, I know that Make a Wish Foundation. They are pretty um, wealthy in some ways because they they're pretty strong. But the things they need a lot more people to know who they are because they're helping a lot of kids to make their wishes come true. Mm. And um, I think for me, last year when we did this, we actually had an exhibition Taipei One Hundred One. Taipei One Hundred One actually supported us by giving us their fourth floor space for free for ten days oh, wow. to exhibit these bags. Uh -huh. So I think you know it's good to have art and culture and charity together, and then um, simultaneously you have people you know to appreciate a lot of things and learn about a lot of things. And I was really grateful that actually more people came to know what Make a Wish Foundation is and yeah. what their goal was and what they did. Oh, that is cool. What other creative ideas you've had uh, in terms of charity work or volunteer work that came from you? Um, actually, you <laughs> you're, you're really into this, and I think you have a lot of great ideas, and um, they stand out if they're creative enough. You know how it is in Taipei. Yeah. You know these fads come and go, and um, there's always this competing for you know the more creative you are, the more you'll be noticed. You know, yes. isn't it so? Yes, it is, and yeah. it's hard to do charity. I have to say because. Um, <laughs> If I wasn't the one to start some of these projects, it, I would never know how hard it is. But um, you cannot always ask people to just donate. Yeah. You know what I mean? If every month you ask people to donate, people are going to get tired of it. People are going to wonder why. Why am I always giving money? So you have to think of different things, fun events, different events to do sorts of fundraising. So um, during the Chinese New Year, I figure I have some time. So I'm into aromatherapy and um, mm -hmm. really into herbal stuff. So then um, I got some herbal teas that right. you know, I bought back from Europe. So these are my own keepsake. But then I figured, you know what, I should do something with them to share with the world instead of just my friends and family. So then I made tea bags out of these herbal teas and I sold them. Right. So then every time you buy you know, a pack of tea, then it's donated to Love Rabbit or SCPA. So my goal for Chinese New Year was to help two organizations, SCPA, and there is an organization called Love Rabbit. Uh, they really help rabbits. Rabbits. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever kept a rabbit before? Is that why? Uh, no, my cousin did. Okay. But um, it's just, for me, um, as long as an organization is very into helping what they believe in, I believe what they do, I will try to help as much as I could, even though it's something very little. Yeah. We can only do the best that we can. I mean, not a lot of people know that there is actually an NPO that just, you know, goes to helping rabbits alone, but there are. And you know how Chinese people, like the year of the rabbit, they yeah. will buy a lot of rabbits. And then after that year, they're like, oh, okay, the year is over, so let's just let them go. So they leave these rabbits out at parks. Mm. And it's very sad. They can't. They can't take care of themselves. Yeah, you're right. I yeah. know. Yeah. Now, this could be a sensitive question, but um, I know that you know any N N oh, NPOs, um, if they could get a celebrity as a backing, mm -hmm. it really benefits them. Yes. But then, for you to be able to convince all the other celebrities to give or to give their time in, I don't know, designing a bag and all that kind of stuff. I mean. Do you sometimes get a little bit of like not enough, um, how should I put it, not enough backing from that because they don't have the time or they think that, oh, this is another charity thing and they think that, do you know what I mean? Yes, I totally know what you mean. Yeah. It's very frustrating, but isn't it? this is life, you know, so then I feel that if you believe what you're doing, you're going to meet ups and downs and encounter many different hardships and obstacles, but you know, you just got to look on the bright side, you know, you see different sides to different people when you really get down to it, you know, and do something. And yes, um, for a certain project where maybe celebrities might think, well, are you using me to back up maybe a brand or something? But, you know, when you're really even not thinking about that, you just want to do something that's fun, that's creative, that will help fundraise and raise awareness. But um, I guess, you know, people think differently and because it's it's the industry, you know, I mean, for celebrities, they get some they, they get sponsorships. So yeah. for many things that they do, you do get paid. So when it's something that's for free, that requires you to kind of give your time without mm -hmm. payment, 
sometimes, you know, people might feel there's a lot of work, and sometimes celebrities, they might feel it's okay, but their agents might feel that, no, yes. we may not want them to do that, because if they did that, another organization, they probably will want the same, and we don't have time for all of this. But to me, I feel like at the end of the day, it's really up to what you believe in and what you want, because I feel if it's a product sponsorship endorsement, it's different. Yeah. Of course, you know, money's involved. But I sincerely believe that when it comes to charity, this is not how people should be thinking. It shouldn't be up to the agents. It should be up to you, the person. If you want to endorse something for charity, say a few words to, you know, kids that are in need, you know, to get people to raise more awareness. I don't think another organization will feel bad about you helping out another organization. Mm -hmm. So, you know, don't think so much. Just follow your heart. Yeah. That's what I believe. That's true. That's true. How do you convince them? I mean, sometimes it takes you to explain why you're doing this and why you care so much about it. And but then, of course, it depends on whether they're willing to listen to you or something like that. And, and sometimes maybe you're putting a lot of money in organizing the whole thing or maybe even a press conference and then not that many people show up. I mean, did, I'm sure you sometimes experience this kind of frustration. Yeah, we try to do things without putting money in because we try to fundraise. <laughs> so if you're going to be putting money in, you have no money to give. So that's another hardship, right? You have to try to get everything for free. You have to get sponsors. And um, it's all about you know, asking for favors. So that's why when I started putting up events, organizing events, I realized it's really not easy and um, yeah. you really have to have a thick face. And, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. you know, <laughs> my face is not that thick, really. But um, that's why you have to, you know, kind of brainwash yourself sometimes. That's why I keep saying, if you believe what you do, you know, you're going to see a rainbow somewhere. Uh -huh. But it gets really... It's kind of, you know, sometimes I get all emotional also. You know, one moment, I'm so happy that I have these people that are really vehement about what I'm doing and they're so grateful. They're like, oh, great. And the next moment I encounter something and I'm like, oh my gosh, why am I doing this? Why am I putting myself in this position? You know, yeah. in Chinese, they call it uh -huh. you know, You're trying to they do something a, right. that's a good deed, but people might not think it. And people might think you're annoying. Yeah. Why are you hassling me? I have more to do. Stop calling me. Stop asking me to make videos. Stop asking me to give this for free or that for free. But there's nothing you can do. I mean, we're all trying to do just a little bit to give back. And if everybody has the money, then there wouldn't be such a thing called fundraising. Mm. Yeah, that is true. Well, it's amazing how you're doing all this good stuff. Um, what's your next thing that you're working on in terms of charity, charity? work? Yeah. <laughs> well, um, there's, I don't know, it's just somehow continuously projects are coming in with charity. People actually, a lot of people out there, they are all for giving back to society. I think these days, especially in Taiwan in the recent years, people are more aware of charity and then they're more willing to give and give more time. It's just that a lot of people, they don't know how to give yeah. and to give back. So, um, you know, I have people asking me to maybe help them to set up a charity event because they want to do something to fundraise. But then, of course, with the help of celebrities, you know, it's a lot easier to get people, other people, normal, normal people to be involved, you know. So right now, actually, this brand, Duchess Leather, they actually hosted a charity event where um, everything you buy from them, they give 10%, and um, they work with bloggers who actually are selling their secondhand clothing, and then they asked me to help because I have some celebrity friends who may have some secondhand clothing to sell. Uh -huh. And so for this whole month of March, we have sales at the showroom Okay. So 10% of their stuff will all go to charity for CCSA. Mm -hmm. It's an organization that helps teenagers okay. that are less fortunate from dysfunctional families. And um, for the artist part, actually, everybody is different. Like for me, I donate 100% of my clothing. So whatever is sold is all given away. Mm -hmm. And some artists, they say, okay, 10%, other artists is 50. Mm -hmm. So this is just something fun. So then for this month, every day at their showroom, people can go and shop. And um, every weekend we have events. And so for today's Friday, tomorrow's Saturday, we have our last event 
where CCSA founder is going to come, they're going to make a speech, and then we hope by doing this to raise more awareness so then people know what they do. And of course, to do some final fundraising. Mm. Wow, that is great. So you're keeping yourself very busy with that. Yes. And then what's what are you what else are you busy with right now? Um, of course, my regular job. You know, I'm a TV personality, and um, I do host shows. I go on shows. I act, and um, so basically, I have to balance everything with what I do on the side. Charity is not my full time job. Mm -hmm. It's my you know, I guess you can call it hobby. Because mm -hmm. um, it's something that I feel that I'm fortunate enough to be at a position where I am. So I want to give back. And um, I know I'm not, I'm, I'm not like um, somebody who's like extremely famous. Like um, in Taiwan, Luo Zhishang show, he's just like, you know, the guy, right? right? But still, there are many of us celebrities out there who's willing to use our fame to help out society and to give. And... Um, I think that's enough for a lot of people because for a lot of people, they cannot even get help like this. So as long as we work together and we're a team, I think this world could be a better place. Mm, that is true. So, you know, so what kind of work are you that you enjoy more than others? Um, I'm talking about your other career side. Um, I your actually travel like, program. You I do actually that like more? all aspects of oh, you do? entertainment. Okay. Okay. And that's why I'm in it. I mean, I love acting. I love to be somebody that's not me. So I love playing a different <laughs> character. Okay. I love hosting travel shows because I love sharing experiences. And um, um, I'm in the process of negotiating a show where we're going to different areas, like in the mountains of Taiwan, to actually show the kids there. There are, a lot, there are actually a lot of kids who are in the mountainsides who are less fortunate. Yeah. So we want to do a show that are positive, that's fun for the normal viewers, but actually allow these kids to see a different world out there. That's your idea? Um, this bring these less fortunate kids to no, see the No, it's not world? just my idea. He's oh, okay. a producer. Actually, oh, he's been working on this for three years, so we've been working on this idea together. But of course, because this show is not like one of those other variety shows in Taiwan where right. it's just talk shows or game shows, it's, there's more depth to it. So okay. there are a lot of things to be discussed. So it took him three years to actually get to where he is now. And if everything works out, we will start airing, we'll start filming maybe in May. Oh, it hasn't started, but no, it's no, going, no. all right. Pre-planning actually takes a lot for yeah. <laughs> certain shows like this because we actually have to go into different areas. So you have to scout out locations. You have to do your research on population and just the different scopes of things. All right. I've always wondered, I'm so bad at memorization. How do you memorize scripts? You know, when it comes to acting, how um, do you do it? Well, just do it? Well, you really have to just, you know, feel your part. If you just want to memorize, just word by word is really hard, especially for someone like me who can't read Chinese. So yeah. you have to actually just get yourself in that mode and try to understand what you're saying. You have to understand it so you can feel it. All right. So you don't sound like a robot. You don't have to, like, memorize every single word, Of course. Right? I mean, you don't have to do that these as days because it's not normal. Then you don't sound like yourself. I see. Okay. Now, I did ask you that to think ahead was that if one day you were to leave Taiwan, mm -hmm. what's that one sound you would miss that's typically Taiwan? Ah, uh, the one sound. I used to live one of those old walk-ups in Yonghe. And um, every day, like sometime in the afternoon, I will hear babu, babu, uh -huh. babu, babu. It's this ice cream man, yes. but not with a truck. He No, bicycle. bicycle. He has a bicycle yeah. and then he has his, um, it's this like one. the ice cream is more like gelato. Yeah. It actually tastes like gelato, and my favorite is taro. And then he has this... Um, it's a horn. It's yes. a horn. That's why it makes that sound babu, babu. Right. <laughs> so I actually miss that. It's, it's very old school, and yeah. it's very cool. It's something that you would never hear if you're not in Taiwan. Exactly. It's typically Taiwan. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for your time, Lisa. Thank you, Shirley. Yeah, I can see that you have a great heart for giving to society. So um, good luck in that area, yes. honestly. Thank Good luck you. to all of us. <laughs> all right. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you Lisa. Much. Thank you for watching, people. I'm Shirley Lin.